Jesus is not a myth, nor is the Bible a mythical book. It's time to start learning and get moving. Time waits for nobody, but Jesus is waiting on you. Heaven has room for you, but hell does too. Say yes, what's the difference? You know what, the Bible's just another book. No, first off, that's wrong. The Bible's not a book. The Bible's 66 books, 40 different people wrote it. Over 1,500 years, there's never been a book like that in history. Ever. Does that make it the Word of God? No. It just means it's worth considering, because there's never been a book like this. Gives you some reason to consider it over the others. Well, how about history? For hundreds of years, archaeology has used the Old Testament and new to find buildings, to find people, to find civilizations, to find kings that didn't exist or they didn't think they did. And suddenly the Bible said they're there and they dug it up and there it was. Does that make it the Word of God? No. It means it's historically accurate. Real people really existed and really wrote down what they saw. It's worth considering. Jesus is not a myth. Just like any historical figure, Jesus was real. And there is historical evidence to prove this. It is incontrovertible according to the historical principles of investigation that a man named Jesus existed in the first century. How do we know this? We have over 40 records of Jesus' life from ancient times describing this man who is essentially a carpenter in Palestine. He didn't have much of anything. He wasn't a centrally important figure at the time, yet we have 40 sources that refer to him. You know who the emperor was at Jesus' time? Someone shout it out. Tiberius, good. Tiberius was the emperor of Rome at that time. Now this is a man who obviously we should have a lot written about. We can expect tons and tons of records about this man, can't we? The historical records contain Tiberius' name by 10 different individuals, that's it. 10 for Tiberius, the emperor of Rome, 40 for Jesus. You can see we have excellent reason to believe that this man, Jesus of Nazareth, lived and existed in the first century. That's why Did Jesus die on the cross? The scholars who study his life, regardless of whether they're atheist, Buddhist, agnostic, Hindu, Christian, it doesn't matter. They all conclude that Jesus died on the cross. Every scholar virtually in the world can see Jesus was dead after being crucified. Uh, even the Journal of the American Medical Association, a secular, scientific, peer-reviewed medical journal, carried an investigation into his death and said, clearly, the weight of the historical and medical evidence indicates Jesus was dead even before the wound to his side was inflicted. So we have excellent reason to believe Jesus died on the cross. Did he rise from the dead? I thought the resurrection was a legend, and I knew it took a long time for legend to develop. So I thought, thought 100, 200 years after the life of Jesus, legends were invented about the resurrection. No, I found out we have a report of the resurrection of Jesus that includes the names of eyewitnesses and groups of eyewitnesses that has been preserved for us by the Apostle Paul. It has been dated back by scholars to within months of the death of Jesus. You can find it in 1 Corinthians 15, starting at verse 3. That creed of the earliest church, that report of the resurrection, has been dated back to within months of the death of Jesus. That's far too quick to write it off as a legend. Not virtually all scholars conclude three things happened after Jesus died. Well, number one, the first one is that Jesus did die on the cross, which we just looked at. Number two, that the disciples, Jesus' disciples, all believed he had risen from the dead. Something happened that made all of these guys come back and be willing to be martyred for this belief system. Everybody died a martyr's death. What was it for? Because they thought they were going to get rich? There was no riches here. There was nothing good here. There was nothing here to gain. And they all still died for what? Because they found a new religion? No, for one reason, they said this. I saw him die, and I saw him come back. You know, most of what we know about the ancient world, when we look at a fact we believe about the ancient world, it's based on one source, or maybe two sources of information. But for the conviction of the disciples that they encountered the resurrected Jesus, we have no fewer than nine ancient sources, inside and outside the New Testament, that confirm and corroborate the conviction of the disciples that they encountered the risen Jesus. That is an avalanche of historical data. In light of this avalanche of evidence that points so powerfully toward the truth of Christianity, I realize it would take more faith to maintain my atheism mm. than to become a Christian. Wow. The scales went like that. <laughs> Wow. And that's when I reached my verdict that Jesus not only claimed to be the Son of God, he backed up that claim by returning from the dead. There is so much evidence proving Jesus did exist and he was crucified. 
and he died, and he rose from the dead. And if the Bible is real, then Jesus is real. And if Jesus is real, then heaven is real. And if heaven is real, then hell is real. Time waits for nobody. You need to start believing in Jesus in your heart before you take that last breath on earth. So if you go to hell, you chose it. And you will not sit there and argue with him. You'll know what you've done. And if you're an atheist, let me tell you something. That's your dilemma. If we all die and there is no, no God, it's just eternal unconsciousness, you'll never know. But if you're wrong, you'll know forever. And it's not a gamble anybody should take.